Please join me in the Christian greeting. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Please stand for the call to worship. Here at the feast of God's holy word and holy meal, eyes and ears are opened, so that we may all be made glad and filled with hope. Thanks be to God. Our hymn of praise is O oh, for a Thousand Tongues.
Let us conclude our prayer of confession together. Forgive my rejection of your will and my contempt for your promise. Heal my divided spirit and reveal your way, my Lord, once again. Let sinfulness no longer define us. No me, wait, my Lord. Amen. Just as Jesus made the deaf to hear and the mute to speak, our merciful God. Our merciful God, God, God lifts our burdens from us. We are forgiven, removes the failures of our past, and turns us to new life. We are forgiven while we be. join me in the prayer for illumination. Holy God, whose spirit comes to us in moments of both strength and weakness, come now into our midst that we might be able to hear your word in fullness and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading is Psalm 146. We will be reading responsibly. I'll read the odd verses, and you will read the even verses. Note that you read first. Let us read the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord all my life. Let's switch that. How about, how will we read the odd verses? You're not starting for the odd verses. Mixed up the directions. I'll go first. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes and human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion. For all generations, praise the Lord. Our Gospel reading is from Mark, chapter 7, verses 24 through 37. Hear the word of the Lord. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, born in Cyrenian Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demons out of her daughter. First, let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying in bed and the demon gone. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went, went through Sidon down to the Sea of Galilee 
and into the region of the Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk. They begged Jesus to place his hand on him. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears, then he spit and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to the heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephephetha, which means be opened. At this, the man's ears were opened and his tongue was loosened and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the word of the Lord. There were three retirees, each with some hearing loss, who were walk, taking a walk one fine September day, maybe just like today. One of them remarked to the other, Windy, ain't it? No, the man said, it's Thursday. The third man chimed in, so am I, let's stop and get a Coke. <laughs> hearing loss is really no laughing matter. I know a number of years ago, my family had been making fun of the things I thought I heard. Well, I finally had my hearing tested and now I wear hearing aids in both ears. The difference for me was remarkable. The only problem is when Max asked me to do something I don't want to do, I can no longer tell him, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. In the passage for today, Jesus had a chance encounter with a man who is deaf and had a speech impediment. And to everyone's astonishment, Jesus heals him. Jesus gives this man a chance to hear. A number of years ago, I heard a story about a Native American, a Cherokee, who was in downtown New York walking with a friend who lived in New York City. As they were walking along, all of a sudden, the Native American stopped and said, I hear a cricket. His friend replied, oh, you're crazy. No, I hear a cricket, I do. I'm sure of it, he said. The New Yorker said, it's noon. There are people everywhere headed to lunch. Cars are honking, taxis are squealing. There's all the noise from the city. Surely you cannot hear a cricket above all that. The Native American said, well, I sure hear a cricket. So he listened attentively and then walked about 10 feet to the corner where there was a shrub in a large cement planter. He dug beneath the leaves and found the cricket. His friend was astonished. But the Cherokee said, my ears are no different from yours. It simply depends on what you are listening to. Here, let me show you. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a handful of change, a few quarters, some dimes, a nickel, some pennies. He dropped it on the concrete. Every head within half a block turned. See what I mean? He said as he began picking up all the coins, it all depends on what you're listening for. I wonder what the de deaf man in the passage today started listening for. The birds chirping, a baby's laugh, children at play and giggling, the sound of water trickling in a stream or rain falling on the road. There are millions of sounds to listen to, but I wonder what caught his attention the most. I think it was probably the voice of Jesus. What are you listening for? Of course, Jesus wants to us to listen to his voice over the noise of the crowds and the hustle and bustle of everyday life. That's why he came. That's why God sent his only son. God wants us to listen to his son's voice over everything else in the world. Sometimes that's very difficult to do because the world gets so very loud. There's a legend that says, after the fall, after Adam and Eve left the Garden of Eden, they had a hard time believing God still loved them. They had disappointed God, something fierce. They realized they'd been duped by the serpent. 
that although he was punished and forced to crawl on his belly for all its eternity, still left laughing at the plight of Adam and Eve. It said that God saw the torture of Adam and Eve and the anguish that was taking place in their hearts and souls, and it broke God's heart. God grieved for the lost innocence of his children. God feared for the love and faith of each of his children and his future children. If they didn't know the love of God and have it alive in their hearts, they would perish. So eventually with all of creation. One day during a staff meeting with God's leading angels, they noticed that God seemed distracted. So the angel of love and the angel of mercy and the angel of grace asked God what was wrong. God let out a sigh of despair so deep it brought tears to the eyes of every angel in the heavens. The minute those tears began to fall, God looked at the angels of love, mercy, and grace and devised a plan that was so wonderful that the tears of the angels never made it to earth. They froze in the darkness of space, and like diamonds, they hang there to this day. We call them stars, and at night they reflect the light and the love of the one who sits upon the throne of heaven. But that's not the end of the story, for God and the angels carried out God's plan. At the birth of every child, a guardian, a guardian angel was assigned. The job of the guardian angel was quite simple. All day, they had to whisper into the baby's ears, God loves you, God loves you. So it was from that moment on that guardian angels began whispering in our ears, God loves you, God loves you. Sometimes when a baby is alone and no parents or other children around, you can hear the baby giggle and coo for no apparent reason. That's because their guardian angel has been whispering God's love in their ears. Oh well, this worked for a long time. People listened and knew God's love. But there came a time when the world began to get noisier and noisier. At first it was just the noise of every workday, hammering, soaring, the noise of the butter churn, the splatter of pots and pans, the sound of the hoe in the garden, and the lowing of the cattle and sheep. The whispering of the guardian angel could still be heard, but then as humans and technologies developed, the noise of the world got louder and louder. Factories and foundries, mills and manufacturing plants began to flourish. Their noise filled the air. As more noise filled the air, people began to get distracted and unfocused. Many of them were not hearing the words of their guardian angel. God loves you, God loves you. Then came the invention of radio, television, cell phones, satellite radio, and the internet. Pretty soon the airwaves were filled with all kinds of noise. Fewer and fewer people were listening to the words of the guardian angels. God loves you, God loves you. Although the noise level continued to grow, Still, the guardian angels whispered God's love in our ears so our hearts would know, God loves you, God loves you. They never failed in their duty, though they get discouraged because we don't listen or the noise of the world is too loud for us to hear. Still, they continue to whisper, God loves you. But the good news is that we can still hear the whisper of our guardian angels. God loves you, God loves you. We can still hear the healing words that we are not alone, nor do we face life and the problems of life alone. God has not abandoned us. We have someone who loves us. All we have to do is stop and listen. God loves you, God loves you. There are many encounters that we have had with God through Christ and the chance encounters others have had. We've been challenged to sing the Lord's song and dance the Lord's dance. We've been challenged to help, to see, 
to start over, to drink deep from God's well in Christ. Today, I give you a chance to hear. Today, I want you to take a couple minutes to, to take you through a little guided prayer exercise. It doesn't require to move or to get up or to write or do anything. All you have to do is bow your head and enter into the exercise in a spirit of prayer and, of course, to listen. I want you to imagine these are the words you've longed to hear God speak to you and listen. Get comfortable, close your eyes, and listen. God loves you. God loves you. Hear the voice of God say, I love you. I am listening. I love you. Your sins are forgiven. I love you, for you are my precious son or my precious daughter. I love you and bless both you and your family. I love you. Everything is going to be okay because you are mine. I love you. Your loved ones are fine and you will see them again. Don't forget, I rose from the dead and ascended into heaven because you are mine. You will too. I love you. I can't say this often enough. Your sins are forgiven. I love you, and my love in your life will make you a better husband, a better wife, a better child, a better daughter, a better son, a better parent, a better grandparent, a better worker, a better best friend, and a better leader. I love you, and my love in your life will give you more patience and compassion. I love you. And I am with you every moment of every day. You are not alone. I love you. Your sins are forgiven. Because your sins are forgiven, now you can forgive yourself. Let go of that guilt. It's weighing down your life. I love you. I know your faults and your shortcomings. And I love you in spite of them. I love you. And there is nothing you can do to make me stop loving you. I love you and I feel the pain you are in. My love will get you through that pain. I love you and I am with your children. Wherever they go, I go. I love you. I can help turn your sadness into joy, joy in me. I love you. Your sins are forgiven because your sins are forgiven. Now you can forgive those who have hurt you. Let go of that anger. It's building a wall between us. I love you and I have great plans for you. Don't give up. We're not through yet. I love you. You can trust me. I will carry all your burdens if you will just lay them down and give them to me. I love you. And I am in the midst of your suffering. It is me who is holding you up. It is me who is holding you together. Don't let go, hang on me. I love you. Your sins are forgiven. Welcome home. Open your eyes now, take a deep breath. You have just experienced a chance to hear. But one more thing I want you to listen and listen closely. God loves you. God loves us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Our hymn of responses, I dance in the morning. Let us stand and lift our voice. <laughs>
Receive our thanks, O God, for your gifts of life, means, and times. We treasure your offerings, and small as our return giving may be, welcome it to the sake of those in need and for the furtherance of your witness in this world. Make us daily more grateful for all you have been given. In Jesus Christ, amen. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east, you may be seated, I'm sorry. They will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust in him to share the feast which he has prepared.
on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving grace of the risen Lord until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, the table is ready. body given for you. Drink Christ's blood shed for you. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, that through word and sacrament you have given us your Son, who is the true bread from heaven and food for eternal life. So strengthen us in your service, who our daily living may show our thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our ascending hymn is Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love. We will be singing only verses one, two, and three. So let us stand.
today is to be strong and do not fear. Trust in the Lord's blessings of answered prayer and healing. Listen to the wisdom around you. Speak well of your neighbors. Teach peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.